123. It is a very different story. But here we go. Lights coming on. It is time to wind them up and let them go. A really sure hold there. And we are screwed. That's a storming start from Otis Lawrence, but he is easily fended off from Lucas Blakey. Ishmael fastly trying to get past the Aston Martin now for second position. On the way down the hill, looks like everybody has survived so far. And Otis Lawrence slots back into second. Now Lucas Blakely has the unenviable task of giving everybody slipstream behind him. So here we go then, Ishmael fast. He's got the run, he's got the Aston Martin, but he's boxed in behind the McLaren. Otis Lawrence, oh my goodness me, that's far wide on the way down towards the Spanish game. And oh. Nicholas Longay has just nailed all of them. And Jack West, unfortunately, has gone off. Facing the wrong way in the house after a storm, it's up a Nicholas Longay. Where the <laughs> hell did that come from? At the minute, Alpi Butcher doing his best to hang into this fight, as is Piotr Stahelet in towards now. Cop corner, they go. Jan Ormi has a puncture on the front left. Big tyres have given out at the last hurdle on lap number 24 of 26. The rain hit for him, but it just wasn't enough. His tyres now giving way. He has a puncture, and his race has been ruined. Rain just did not come close enough for Alvaro Caraton and Jan Ortman to really benefit from going long on the hards. It is now a four-way fight for the win of this race. Ifan Buki leading on nine lap old soft compound of tyres against Otis Lawrence and Alfie Butcher, who's going to have the best conditions out of anyone. Let's have a look at the battery. All of them very low at the moment, except for Otis Lawrence. He's got 40% in the back of his McLaren, and now he's going to be closing in towards Ifan Buki, in towards Brooklyn. They go. He looks towards the outside line. Alfie Butcher sneaking his way up the inside line. Otis will have the inside for turn number seven at Lafield, but off the exit of that corner. Surely they don't want to be fighting for P2 because the win of, the, of this race is going to be slipping away from them. It's Van Pukie going to be able to get away up the road ever so slightly in towards Cop's corner. They go for the final time in this race. Surely everything going to climax down in towards Stowe. Turn number 15. They've got to navigate Maggots and Beckett in these tricky conditions for the final time in this race. Here we are now. Otis Lawrence, Alpi Butcher, Pios Sahel. They'll all have the DRS to charge at Isvan Puki. And in towards So Corner, they go down the hangar straight. Puki defending to the inside line. Otis Lawrence goes a long way round. And he's going to take the lead on the final lap of this race. He's going to be, the, he's going to take victory here because Isvan Puki getting bogged down. Here comes Salah getting the position on Alfie Butcher. But off the exit of the Vail Chicane and through Club Corner for the final time. Otis Lawrence is going to take victory here in Great Britain. He'll win at Silverstone. Isvan Buki hangs on for P2. Stahelek and Alfie Butcher spinning across the line. Now or never for Thomas Ronha, who has a full 
battery. He's deploying it to close to the back of Jano Otme, who's going to do everything he can to defend from his fellow countrymen. The two Dutch drivers looking to do battle. It's a civil war on the final lap of the Belgian Grand Prix. Jano Otme with a three-tenth advantage ahead of Thomas Ronha, heading up the hill for the final time in this race. This is the moment for Thomas Ronha to go on the attack as he'll close to the rear, following the wheel tracks, then dart to the inside line on the back of Jano Otme to take the lead, heading in towards the Lacombe chicane for the final time in this Grand Prix, but Jano Otmir will not give up here, he's still got 37% in the battery, Thomas Ronha though with 60%, is that the battle done and dusted? He's got an 8 tenth gap, 9 tenth gap as they come through, out of Kerr de Poul Fred, down towards Bunch Dumont, I don't think there's anything that Jano can do here Dan. No, it doesn't look like it. Thomas Ronha yet to score a podium in this season. He's finished third here before in season 14, but he's going to capture the gold in season 16. 18th in the points, no longer for Thomas Ronha. It's going to be a big haul of 25 as he comes across the line. He will take the win here in Belgium. Jano Otmir will take second. It's not quite the win, but with it, will capture the championship lead. for the uh, lack of life in his tyres. Only time will tell. Lucas Mini pushing the Mercedes along. Oh, here comes Longe. Oh, he's going to try and get the McLaren in. And then by the top of the Mercedes coming into the chicane. Oh, my goodness. This could be oh. horribly messy. Oh, no. Powers Farsi. And um, somehow Ica Baena is ghosted through uh, Ismail Farsi. Oh, don't look away yet. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, final lap. It's all on this. And Yano goes a bit deep now. Lucas just trying to save it on to get the DRS. They're all paying the DRS chicken gate as he come through. Heading back up the hill at Arouge and Radion. The final lap, the final opportunity for Lucas Bakley probably to get himself ahead of Yano Watmin as we come through with the DRS. It's the inside, the outside line for Lucas. It's Nicholas Longay trying to get through on the two of them as we head down in towards Lake Comet. It's Nicholas Longay, but well, Lucas Bakley just about gets it. He goes on track nearly and it's Nico around the outside. You are not me up the inside of Lucas. <laughs> this is mental. Oh. And now we've also got Ika Bayana in the battle. What is this? This is absolute mental stuff from these drivers on the last lap of the race. Yeah, oh, Lucas had to give up on it. Now Lucas Lawrence has just nailed Ika Bayana, who was slightly wrong footed with the incredible elbows action from Yano Wapi and Lucas Blakely. But what a brilliantly timed attack from Nico Longe. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, oh it's three of them out. Oh no, Bayana and Fassi. Oh, off into the wall. At the death of the race. <laughs> what, what a battle there. And that is them out of the points. And now we come through towards Pochmon for the final time. It is Nicholas versus Jarno Otmir now. 
and also Lucas Bateley sitting right behind. Obviously, he's got his penalty, so he'll drop down as we come through in towards the final few corners. And Nicholas Longay, what a drive. We thought he's out of it. He's got all the ties. He's done for. But as we come through, that's Lucas Bateley trying to send it, but Nicholas Longay will come through to win the Belgian Grand Prix. And he, I think Yano just made that. Yes, he has. And Otis gets the podium as Lucas Bateley drops down. And Yano now will take the lead of the championship. Oh are beginning to die out for both Dylan Warren and Ishmael Fassi. They're still going to be incredibly quick for Max Vietel. Dylan Warren pulling to the inside then of Jake Benham. Ishmael Fassi looking to split the middle of them. Here comes Max Vietel as well. He gets through on Ishmael Fassi. Can he make the move stick on Jake Benham? He looks to the outside and he's going to make it three wide into the Bell chicane. An amazing move for Max Vietel there. Getting his way hey. up into P3. The rain is here. The rain is falling on lap number 25 and this, this tail takes another twist. Yeah, Nishmael Fassi now to defend. Nishmael Fassi goes completely off circuit down at turn two. Jay Benham still fighting now. This is with Duncan Hoffman and Jonah Otmir into the top four. And that gap between Joseph Locke and Max is four point nine seconds. They're all sliding. As now gap to Joseph Locke here. Yeah, this is pretty much into the territory nearly, isn't it? You can see the spots of rain on the circuit. Jonah Otmir on the back of Dylan Warren. Dylan's nearly, and actually Joseph made a mistake because Max Wiesel's now 4.7 seconds back. Dylan Warren's a second back. You're up. You're up. He's also looking to get to get himself ahead of the front. He has a massive slide heading out to turn five. DRS is still enabled as they head down in towards Brockens. You're up. up the inside of Dylan Warren. Good to get himself ahead. Then has a massive slide again. Dylan is not happy with these conditions at all. That gap between Max Wiesel and Joseph Locke is 4.7 seconds. I think at this point, Max Wiesel's turned it around and now he is in the position to win this race. Joseph Loke, I think it might be two second places on the try. He's sliding his way through Cop's corner, loses all time possible as they're just... <laughs> I mean, look at how soaked this circuit is, and this all happened in the span of just two laps. They're crawling their way. Joseph floats over the over the grass, shattering the DRS sign. Now Max Wiesel is losing crucial tenths of a second, crucial thousands that he needs to win this race. Joseph Loke now 4.7 seconds clear of Max Wiesel. It's in God's hands now as to who takes victory in this Grand Prix. One slight error could ruin your race. As now Joseph Loke through the final corners, he's done all he can to take victory in this race he'll cross the line on circuit <laughs> winning this race Max Wiesel to the line though he's been able to keep it within that five second window he'll take the win by just two and a half tenths of a second